Welcome everybody. Hi, my name is Marjorie Gold Falk and I'm going to take you on a journey into the world of art today, which might be a little bit different than other things that you've been doing. If you have no experience with art, no problem at all. I'll make it very easy for you. I'm so glad to be here at B'nai Ashurun. My history goes back here. I was consecrated here. I was confirmed here. I was married here. I taught um, art classes here on Sunday mornings years ago, and I've uh, worked with a lot of the workshops now um, te teaching um, adults and uh, children um, artwork with the B'nai Mitzvah groups. And um, I, I, currently, I'm also with the Essentia group, which is housed here at B'nai Ashurin for adults with special needs. So my focus today is going to be art. And as I said, if you have no experience with art, no problem. You'll be doing just fine. We're going to be doing something called a mixed media collage still life. So um, let me go over those three terms. First of all, a mixed media means we're going to use a variety of materials. And I'll go over different possibilities with you. The other thing is we're going to be working on a still life. And a still life are simply objects on a table. And the last thing is collage, and the word collage is a French word, and it means to cut and paste. So we're going to load a lot of things in there. One thing I really want you to keep in mind, the overarching, is that you want to make this personal. And that way you'll enjoy doing it, and I'll have some feeling for you. Because we're doing this in a Jewish context, you might want to um, bring in some of your Jewish ideas, your thoughts, your feelings, your reminiscence, your history. So let me begin. I'm going to start with a history of um, this subject matter. So we're going to start over here with the very first whoops, slide. Um, and it is by a, um, a Flemish artist, 17th century Flemish artist, by the name of Jacob von Halskonk. And I have two of his paintings. These are at the Cleveland Museum of Art, where I'm a docent. So I wanted to involve some of, uh, include some of these these works. If you look here, it's on a table, um, and it's objects. And the objects are very, very realistic. This was done in 17th century um, Holland. And the artist wanted you to see how well they could paint. This was way before cameras. And so things are very, very realistic. Look at these luscious grapes. They're just like so dewy. And the plums, we know it's like frosty on it. And the cherries. So I want you to look at this. This was done very realistically on a table. Objects, look where they are. We know that this apple is closer to us because it's lower down on the table. Cherry is a little further back, so it a little higher up on the table. And so we know it's a little further back. And then this um, bowl, this plate, is further back, because that's one of the tricks that artists use. Another thing they use is overlapping. This um, plum, this um, peach or apple, is in front of this piece of fruit and in front of this leaf because it's overlapping. So keep that in mind. The other thing I wanted to show you in these very realistic um, old paintings, oil it was oil paint, there is a Chinese porcelain bowl. And that was another way to show you what was very important to people at that time. It showed that they had money. They had an abundance of food, but they also had artwork, um, this porcelain bowl from China. Here's another one, and it is um, delightful. We just got it about a year ago at the Art Museum. It even it shows that, that not only did they have an abundance of food, they had so much food that they didn't even finish it. There's half-eaten food here. Um, we know that it's after a meal because there is a broken glass there. There's some crumbs of bread. There's even a little tiny insect over there. And way over here, there's a butterfly. So the people have not been there for a while. They've left. Their bellies are full. And again, we have three of the porcelain um, pieces so that you can see what was important to the people at that time, that they had lots of money for lots of food, and they have imported objects. A little bit later on, we have um, Paul Cezanne. And Paul Cezanne, again, it's on the table. There we go. There's the table. We've got the fruit. This um, bowl is overlapping uh, this wine glass so that um, you don't see the, the 
end of it. So when you're doing your still life, if that's what you want to do, you're going to think about overlapping and you're going to think about where on the picture plane you are putting things. Um, a, a, his color palette was pretty limited um, in its, that it's blues and yellows and white. So you might think about what kind of color um, theme you want to have for your um, project. You don't have to go and buy lots of different colors. You can keep it pretty limited. He was not interested in the detail and the, the perfection. He was more interested in colors and shapes and um, just a very um, warm feeling. So let's see who else. I put this one, and this is not a still life, and it is not a, um, a collage and it's, it's oil paint, so it's, it's one type of material. But it, most of you are familiar with this, and it's by uh, Marc Chagall, a Jewish um, artist from Russia, and then he lived in, in Paris. But So I just wanted to bring you in that it do something that is familiar to you. Um, Chagall loved to paint pictures from his village, from his shtetl, and so um, think about what is important to you. Here's one of his paintings, and this, um, Mark Chagall, is, was of his dreams. It was called The Marriage. It was a tribute to his wife. So again, we have people, and it's not realistic because, you know, he would be down here. He's up there flying. So think about that. If you're worried about painting things or drawing things realistically, think of it just as basic shapes. I want you to notice there's a window over here, and we're going to see some more artists that like the use of windows. He has a limited palette, too. It's oranges, blues, and black and white, maybe a speck of yellow there for a center of interest. And we've got the table and the objects on it, but it's looking less and less real. Remember, the camera was invented, and so artists were not um, that concerned about painting things to look so real. Um, th this was, it was by um, George Brock. Both Picasso and George Brock were interested in collage. They were the ones that started it. Sometimes I know when people go to the art museum, they look and they go, oh my goodness, um, this, why I, why I could have done this. Well, the idea is this, that these artists did this first. Um, even though it sometimes looks simple and it looks easy to do. So what Brock and Picasso were both interested in, um, because the camera had been invented, they wanted to show musical instruments. Music was very important to them. So they did it, but they broke it up. They said, we can see the side of the instrument, we can see the top of the instrument, we can look under it. So they, and maybe these are the strings of the instrument, I, I'm not really sure. Limited palette, again, they use cut paper. These are beautiful papers. You, you might have some wallpaper or some cloth at home, um, or even from magazines. You can find wonderful patterns and textures from magazines. They also incorporated newspapers. So maybe you have an old newspaper that was very Im 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 meaningful to you, you might want to include that or some type from a book. Um, here's another one. We've got the window. This one's by Picasso. Um, this one is a painting. We've got the guitar here. We've got some sheet music here. It, it was not made to look realistic at all. So you're going to just have fun. You get, he's got some overlapping. And again, a limited palette. It's just the blues, the browns, and a little bit of black. This is a, a it's very simple, still life, only two objects. It's got like a wine glass and maybe an etrog, I'm not sure. Um, limited palette again, blues and yellows and white and a tiny bit of black. But you could just take some objects that you have at your house that's very important for you, maybe for, for a Sabbath um, dinner or for a holiday and put it on a table. Notice the table is in the background. Here's another one by um, Picasso, and it is, again, the same limited color scheme, um, simplified basic shapes, breaking it up into shapes. And again, artists oftentimes love to use pattern. You could create the pattern yourself, or you could um, get it from some kind of um, paper you have. Here's one of uh, Picasso's later ones. Again, we've got the window back here. We've got the table over here. Um, patterns are galore everywhere, even on the instrument. This might be the side of the guitar. This might be another side of the car guitar. So it is cubism, and they're doing a walk around the instrument so that you can see all 
parts of it simplified. Maybe this is an instrument over here as well. But um, you know, you're just going to have fun with it. We got some patterns going on over here and over here, and um, another one, another still life by Picasso. Uh, the the um, picture appears to be dancing and um, having a good time. Here's another one by him. Again, don't worry about realism. We're not looking for that Flemish realism. Here is a, a portrait um, and the woman, you see both of her eyes and her side view um, at the same time. That was one of the things that Picasso was well known for. It's got some plants and it is on a table, so keep that table in mind. Um, this was another one that was completely um, abstracted. You can see a little bit of instruments, but it's again a muted color scheme. I put this one in. This is by an African-American artist by the name of Jacob Lawrence. And I liked it because um, maybe it's going to give you some ideas. Again, we have a table. We have three people. They're ironing. We've got the window in the background. We've got luscious patterns. He uses oil paint and, a, and tempera paint. And it's very bright colors and very, oops, very lively. Um, I, this reminds me of my grandmother. My grandmother used to come to our house and iron. My mother didn't like to iron, and so my grandmother would do it. So maybe you want to do something from your history, something that reminds you of something. And again, simple shapes, rectangles, um, ovals for the arms. Um, you, you don't have to be a master at it anatomy. Another African-American artist, Romare Bearden, and I love Romare Bearden. He's master of collage, cutting and pasting. I believe over here is some kind of a um, card or, or a magazine that he cut out. Um, he loved his grandmother as well, lived with his grandmother for man, many um, years in her boarding house that she had in Pittsburgh. And um, he cut and paste and cut and paste. He used um, photographs that he Xeroxed. And over here, this pink and white is an actual piece of clothing. But we've got the table. We've got the objects on it. And um, be thinking about what's important to you. I just put this one. It's, a, it's more realistic. Um, still life, another one. This one was interesting. They used some sheet music. They used some actual letters that they wrote. Maybe you have an old love letter that you'd like to Xerox and include in here. Maybe your wedding announcement you'd like to include in here. Um, maybe some camp, oops, some camp letters that somebody had written. So they did a collage. They glued and pasted all these um, papers on and then painted or drew right on top of it. This one was was fun. I thought they used some sheet music. They colored the sheet music, maybe with colored pencils or watercolor. It looks like there's tissue paper here, and I'll show you how to just tear the tissue paper and glue in water and put it on. Um, I'm just going through these quickly. This one has some words on it, um, so you could just do that. You could do something um, simple like a Hanukkah, a Sabbath. Again, the window, the table, and some patterns and fun colors. You could do something super simple. This one was done with watercolors. Um, you could do just letters. Um, hi, you could just do something like that. And if you're not sure how to write the words out beautifully, you could um, copy it, get a copy of it um, printed out on paper, cut it out, and use that as your pattern. Um, you could do a hamsa. You could just put your hand down on um, paper, trace it, and then these were just some lines, curving lines that go into circles, making some abstracted flowers. So that's another idea. Um, and this one just reminded me of Shabbos candles in different directions. It, I believe that the person even just did a painting and then cut up the painting and glued it back down, rearranged it in a different manner. So. L'chaim. We're going to go on, and I'm going to give you some examples now um, of using a table and maybe a window and some objects. So let me get started with that. One of the artists that I have really liked is um, Robert Rauschenberg, and Robert Rauschenberg was very well known for um, doing collage. You can see over here Kennedy. Um, he would take uh, newspaper articles and... Um, he would take newspaper articles and he would cut them up and put them on another paper. He would do some silk screening. He would paint on it. He would 
up, cut it up, and um, so he, he, this is an idea that you could do. Another thing you could do, and I had done this one of a recipe. You could do a recipe with a collage and um, make it your own. This one, mandel bread, was a, a famous recipe at my house. My grandmother, Hanalea, did it. My mother, Sora Rivka, did it. And I'm Malkaliba, and I did it. But not, instead of doing it just as a, a paper um, with, with just words, um, adding some pictures, some drawings, some, a fun flow about it. Here's another um, recipe with no words, just putting in all the different things that would go into it. And this was done with tissue paper, some paint, some oil pastels, and um, a, a little bit of colored pencil. Another thing you might want to do, and you could do this with your children as well, um, this isn't the still life, but you could take a photograph of yourself in some kind of a pose, cut it out, and then add paint onto it and make yourself with some kind of funny hat, make yourself into a Purim costume, which would be a fun thing to do. You can also sew in it. If you're a person that likes to sew, um, you could sew, sew right onto your project. Here's another one, um, and just adding some sparklers. I saw this in a magazine. I'm going to show you some magazines to use and I thought this would be really funny. It reminded me of a kiddish, um, perhaps at the synagogue. And maybe you would cut, find something like this and then um, make copies of, of photographs to put people that you know spaces on it, glue this on a paper, cutting out um, maybe the background, maybe cutting out the windows and putting things behind it. Um, here's another one. I took a photograph of, of two of my children and I was making a, a table setting and then I added some paint and I added some tissue paper and, um, and some words on it. This was a doily. So it's a mixed media and we've got a little bit of a still life going on. Here's a, another one. This one, I, I really liked this because... Um, let me show you right here. This was a really old picture. I was like six years old, so it's a really, really old. It was a cousin's wedding. Um, and I found this window in a magazine. So I cut out the sections of the window and put this family behind it, um, and then found another piece of magazine, glued that on top, and um, two more of my children. And, play a saxophone so I have music in, in the background. There's some paint. So it's mixed media, many different kinds of materials. And I love it that it, most of the people here have, dis, are deceased. And it's like my relatives are part of me looking, um, looking in. Um, here was another one. Again, I, you can use photographs. You can co hand color the photographs. You can add papers onto the photographs. And um, this was mixed media paint, a, a, a doily, um, fancy papers, and temper paint. So let me get started how, how you're going to do this. First thing is, you don't need pa fancy paper. You could just do a, um, just do a bag. Some of these were done on bags. So just do a plain bag, works great. Another thing you could do, I know if you're anything like me, you're getting lots and lots of Amazon packages all the time. Just cardboard. Cut up the cardboard. That's great. Cereal boxes or any kind of box, cardboard works great. So that would be something that you would begin with. Another thing that you can add are, um, I said doilies. You might want to do a doily. You might want to take... Um, music, sheet music. You don't have to use the actual sheet music. Take it to, if you have a copier at your house. Um, just put it on there and make copies. If you have old um, greeting cards, they make wonderful colors, paper already. You don't even need paint. Another thing is they sell at either like Michael's or, and I know Michael's has a, a curbside. You could go get it. Fancy papers. If anybody wants some, I, I have a lot at my house. You could call me and I'll meet you somewhere. Um, so you could use these fancy papers to cut up. This is some old wallpaper I had had. That's excellent. Here's some more of the fancy papers, and, and they're really fun to use. I have tissue papers. A lot of you have tissue papers for gifts. 
Um, and what you do with this is you take 50% um, glue and 50% water, mix it up, and just put that glue mixture down on a paper and keep adding. You can add layers of um, tissue paper. If anybody has wallpaper books at home, wallpaper is great. Um, wonderful textures, colors. Um, books like uh, William Sonoma, there's a magazine that comes out, or Restoration Hardware. These are great. They have wonderful um, colors, pictures, textures. Newspaper is terrific. Um, you can cut up the newspaper. And um, this also works really good to use as a palette. I use this for mixing my paints. I just squeeze some paints on here and mix it on here. And when I'm done, just throw it out. OK, so let's see a few different processes that we have here. First of all, the, um, think about your placement. You could do three things like this, but it's sort of boring. So well, let's see this. We could do something like this, and you can see that this is further down on the, on the picture plane, and this is further up, and this is still further up because of where the bottom is. So um, try to come up with something a little more interesting. You could do something like this as well, and then overlapping is going to show you what's in front. So then I have a few of these. I did little tiny ones. Um, here's one. I cut out the um, shape over here with the fancy papers, and then I painted directly on it and drew with marker. So it's mixed media. It's paint. It's um, collage, cutting paper up, and then painting directly on it. With that same um, theme, I did a, a wine kiddish cup and some candles and those I was doing with um, with some paints and I'll show they're stick paints and those are, are fun to use too so here's another one if and this was um, one of those in a magazine this was paper in a magazine and you could use a um, pattern so you're going to glue on something like this, and then you could paint on it or just keep adding different kinds of materials and build it up that way. Here's one starting with um, newspaper. And again, the newspaper was 50% um, water and 50% Elmer's glue. The photographs that you use, you could just hand color them, you know, just um, go right into them with, with inexpensive markers. This one I, I started and I, I was I used glue first. I would I drew with glue to get my design. And this isn't finished, but it's it's a beginning. So let's see supplies. Now we're going to talk about supplies. Um, brushes. You know nothing fancy. Few brushes. If you have these at your house and you're not going to a store, these foam brushes work just great as well. Um, markers, Sharpies are always good, highlighters are good, um, scissors, you'll probably need scissors, a pencil, an X-Acto knife is really good, one of these cheapy ones, or you could use a fancier one, I got it Dick Blick, but, um, and then let me look, show you a few other things, watercolors, some of I was showing you watercolors, and you don't have to get the big set. There's a smaller set that's half this size. That's good. For mixing your water, cleaning your brushes, just use a container you have around the house. Elmer's glue you're probably going to want. I pour my paints in egg cartons. Um, I, have, I, I like to draw with black crayon my layout. Um, if you want to do something like Kusama, remember she was at the art museum last summer, and you want to do dots, you could put this Q-tip in paint and just do some dots. That'd be a very cool pattern. Uh, a fat needle if you want to use some yarn and sew into your project. Oil pastels, and these are relatively inexpensive. You could buy these, and they look like oil paint. They're part chalk, part um, paint. Colored pencils are great, especially for coloring photographs um, that you've Xeroxed. I don't like to use the, the real photograph, but if you Xerox it, and markers for coloring them. Um, you could buy a tempera or acrylic paint. You can get a small little container. Um, 
you know, maybe like six six colors. We don't need more than that. And these are super cool. These are um, paints and a stick. They're temper paint and a stick, and um, they work sort of like this. So those are are pretty fun. And no mess. No, you don't need water or anything. So that is it. Um, I be, feel free to contact me at, if you have any questions. Um, at the beginning of this presentation was my phone number and my email. And um, I'm more than happy to help you. Have fun. Enjoy. You can do this with your children, your grandchildren, your parents, with just about anybody. But make it personal. Find some things that really mean something to you. Maybe some old documentation that you want to include or old photographs. Um, and um, maybe set up you know, your own Shabbat candles that, that you use. And um, have fun. Bye-bye.